Hey everyone, and welcome to Christ Church of the Valley, where our mission is to make more and better disciples of Jesus. If you're looking for a church that is faithful to the Bible and meaningful to both you and your family, you may have just found your new spiritual home. My name is Eric, and I'm the worship arts pastor here at CCV. Whether you're attending church online or if you're here on campus, we are just so glad that you're with us. Here are a couple of reminders to ensure that you have a phenomenal experience today. First, we would love to connect with you, and one of the best ways to do that is through our church mobile app. If you don't already have it, simply go to your app store, search CCV Philadelphia, and download it now. Another great way to connect is by visiting ccvlive.com. Click that new to CCV button and fill out an online connect card. However, if you're already on campus, one of the fastest ways to get connected is by filling out the connection card found at the bottom of your program. Take a moment, fill that out, and then you can place that in the offering bowls when they're passed during service. And don't forget, we're on social media, so follow us on all these platforms. Lastly, we're gonna celebrate the Lord's Supper or communion. This is something that we do every week here at CCB. So if you're joining online, take a moment to gather your communion elements now. This could be a piece of bread or a cracker to represent his body and a cup of juice or water to represent his blood. If you're here on campus and you didn't receive your elements, you can always head to the back of the room and find exactly what you need. Find an usher or a greeter, they will help you out. Once again, we are so glad that you're with us. Our service will begin in just a few moments. Christ Church of the Valley. We're so glad that you joined us today. Whether you're here in the building or you're watching home from online, let's go ahead and stand up and rise to our feet today and worship our amazing God in heaven. Amen. Let's give him glory. I give you glory for all you brought me through. And now I'm Whatever you want to do Sing, I'm moving forward I'm moving forward To follow after you And now I'm ready And now I'm ready For whatever you want to do Let's Sing it again And now I'm ready For whatever you want to do Sing your pleasure He's an open door. He wants you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. Church family. We sing and we praise to God who always makes a breakthrough even when we don't see it. Amen. Because I know breakthrough is coming. By faith I see a miracle. My God, he made me a promise and he won't stop now. I know, pray through is 
church family we're gonna keep worshiping and know that there was nothing that our God can't do there was no battle that he cannot overcome there was no sea or no storm that he cannot calm amen let's put our hands together just one word in just one word you calm the storm that surrounds me Just one word, the darkness has to retreat. In just one touch, I feel the presence of heaven. In just one touch, my eyes will open and see. My I can't help but believe. There's nothing that it's not a mountain that he can move. Oh, praise and name that makes a way. There's nothing that a God can't do. There's nothing that a God can't do. There's not a prison wall that he can move. Oh, praise and name that makes a way. Nothing that a God can do. Let's put our hands together. you go ahead and take a moment turn to your neighbor next to you and wish him a happy sunday and after that you can go ahead and grab a seat thank you for serving this morning happy sunday good morning church family we are so glad that you are here this morning everyone that's with us here in the room and for all of you who are joining us online we are so glad that you are with us today as we kick off our series not what I was made for. It is a really good series. We're so glad that you're here for it. If you're new or if you're returning from Easter, we just want to welcome you and let you know how glad we are that you're here. We want to connect with you at the bottom of your program as a connect card. 
please fill that out. Drop it in the offering bowl when it is passed so that we can connect with you. And if you're brand new, please stop out at our info center after service because we have a gift that we would like to give you. And people at our info team, on our information team, would love to just chat with you and answer any questions that you might have. Well, in a couple weeks, in just two weeks, we are having next steps. Next steps, it's kind of like a class, but not really, but it's a place where you can come and ask all the questions that you might have about CCV, about how we practice our faith. We go over all of those things for you. It gives you a chance to meet some of our pastors and just find out how you can really get connected and jump in and become part of the community here at CCV. Well, one of the things that we're doing right now in particular for this series, Not What I Was Made For, is we are launching new small groups today. And I have asked my friends, Casey and Jordan, to join me up here today because they're in a small group. And I just want, I asked them just the other day, I was like, hey, would you guys mind um, just sharing a little bit? Because I know that here at CCB, we talk about small groups a lot. And if you've never been in a small group, you're probably like, what is a small group? What do they do? And it, it might sound interesting, but at the same time, I think to a lot of people, it can sound scary and apprehensive. So I just wanted to ask you guys, when you first decided to like join a small group, what apprehensions did you have? Like what was going through your mind initially? Yeah, well, well for us, it, it, it certainly was a little uncomfortable trying something new. And um, having small kids, just the logistics of it was, was a little challenging to think through. Coming home from work, getting everybody fed, and then making it to group on time. So there certainly were a few things that we had to think through and, and make sure that we had, had in order before we joined. So one of the things that I think a lot of people ask, um, I know a lot of people ask is, what exactly do you do at your small group? You get there and what do you do? Like how would, from your perspective, what happens at small group? Yeah, usually when we get there, we have a little bit of time to socialize, um, time to catch up on the week, and then we move into the discussion questions. Usually starts with a fun icebreaker, then we move into deeper questions about the sermon, and generally have a good time. Good. So something that I want to make sure everybody knows, like, because this, again, a question that I often get is, I don't feel like I know enough about the Bible. I just, I don't feel like I'm good enough or I know enough to be in a small group. How would you guys respond to that? I found groups to be a really welcoming place. I think it's, the people there are kind. I think it's a place where you can come and ask your questions. Everyone comes with a different um, level of Bible knowledge, different background. Um, it's just a safe place. Yeah. And then I would also say it's you don't have to really be prepared to, to look up the passages even. They're provided for you on the discussion questions. So it's actually really accessible to come in. And as long as you can read the passages, you can participate. Yeah, one of the things that I often say is if you have heard the Sunday sermon, it allows you to talk about it and to really learn and, and go deeper and apply it to your life. So um, what would you say, like, what makes it worth it for you guys? Busy, young couple with little kids, what makes being in a small group worth it for, your, for you and your family? We really enjoyed um, the aspect of going deeper about the sermon, applying it to our lives, um, and sharing life with the other members of our group, um, celebrating each other's wins, commiserating about the hard stuff. Um, our gr group leaders have even gone the extra mile, and they've organized some events outside of our regular meeting time. We've volunteered together in a nursing home. Um, we've gone bowling together. So it's been a, a meaningful experience. Good. That's I love that. It's doing life with people, fellow Christians, fellow believers. What would you say, Jordan, to people who like today might be like, yeah, I'm interested in joining a small group for this series, but they're still like on the fence. What would you say to encourage them? Yeah, I would just say, if you want to deepen your knowledge, if you really want to apply what you learn on Sundays, right, and make it, make it stick in your life, and if you want to meet some new folks, right, and deepen some friendships, I would just say it's worth it. Hey, thank you guys. Appreciate you being up here. Thanks so much. So again, if you are thinking about joining a small group, this is the perfect time to do it. We have a lot of new groups for this series, and I can't encourage you enough to just jump in for four weeks. Well, today we are, if you missed Easter, I'm sorry, 
because it was so good. Easter Sunday was so good. And we do know that there are people who um, weren't able to make a contribution to the Easter offering. And I just want to quickly remind you that what our, what our Easter offering is going toward, and one of those things is local outreach. How many of you have ever participated in Serve Fest? Yes. Each year we do, we as a church body, we go out into our community and serve in a multitude of ways. And we, we call this the week of Serve Fest. It is now live on our website, so don't look down, wait till after church. But you can um, you can go on. Most of the most of the Serve Fest opportunities are live and online now. But we we do things for the prison, for uh, local pregnancy organizations, um, homeless shelters. I can't even name everything right now, but there are so many ways that we show the love of Jesus by going out into our community. So um, after services today, I just encourage you to look and see what you might want to sign up for, but keep looking because we're going to be adding more opportunities within the next week. At this time, our ushers are going to come and we will collect our tithes and offerings. Our tithes and our offerings are our way of giving back to God, a portion of what he's given to us. So after they come and we have an opportunity to give, we will continue with our service this morning. family, I invite you to stand back up to your feet. And as we continue in worship this morning, I pray that the goodness of God would oversee whatever situation that you're having a hard time with in life. Because there isn't a moment that God isn't mindful of you, that isn't thinking of you. Because his goodness is enough and it's for you. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. To sing all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see of the goodness of God. night you were close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God I sing all my life church all my life you have been faithful So, so good With every breath that I am able I will see of the goodness of God It's running out to me The goodness overcomes Your goodness is running out 
running out It's running out to me Your goodness is running out It's running out to me Your goodness is running out It's running out to me We might lay down surrender now I give you everything Yes I do Your goodness is running out It's running out to me All my life All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made I love that chorus. I love that we can lean into that chorus and that we know that his faithfulness will follow us all of our lives if we let it. So let's just sing that one more time. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so of the goodness of God. Let's pray, church family. God, we pray that whatever situation we're coming into this house this morning, God, we pray that your faithfulness would be over it, even if it feels impossible, that we recognize that you are the God in heaven of the impossible, and you can overcome anything. God, we trust you with this. We ask this knowing that you are fully capable. We love you and we thank you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Students, you can go ahead and make your way over to the 678 service next door. And everyone else, you can go ahead and grab a seat. Years ago, we sent out a survey and we asked people, why are you at CCV? And I'll never forget one of the responses, four words or four letters, hope. I've come here for hope. Uh, this Thursday, I had a difficult conversation uh, with a counselor that I'm seeing. It's the last time I'm going to tell you about this, by the way. Lisa's like, no one wants to hear about your counseling session. So I'm like, I'm telling them about this one. <laughs> They're on Thursday, and uh, she asks, um, uh, what is the core message of woundedness that you received in your life? I'm like, I, I don't even know what that question means. <laughs> She said, you know, as a child, at some point, you learn something. Usually it's through pain, and it gives you a message that shapes how you view yourself. And I'm like, I, I, honestly, I don't even know. She said, okay, you learned it. It has tentacles that has grown through your entire life now. And so what is it? And I said, what is the message that I received? And I said, she's, I said, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. She was like, don't think, feel. And I finally said, I am utterly and completely alone. She said, that's what you feel. But what did that teach you? And I had a long pause. And then I said this. I said, here's my message of woundedness. If there is one, is that... There is something fundamentally wrong with me. And some of you are thinking, bro, I could have saved you a lot of therapy money. 
<laughs> if you would just ask me, right? And uh, I just, I, I, I just, I have always believed that, that there's something wrong with me. And what she's doing, she's talking about the core of who I am. There is a core to who you are and a message that you had, you have been listening to. And she was talking about identity. You received a message early on, told you something about yourself. You not only believe it, but you have been making decisions now for decades believing that about yourself. And this plays a primary role in your pain. Like she said, this is why you came to me. You had a problem. And I'm telling you that the problem you came in with was only the surface problem. Right? The underlying problem is that you think you have been all alone your whole life because there's something fundamentally wrong with you that have made people not love you. And I'm like, I guess I see that. And then she said, you have this old way of understanding yourself and the world around you, which is at odds now with this new identity that you have in Christ. The kingdom of God comes, is breaking into your heart, and that from that perspective, your soul has been saved, right? But your mind hasn't been changed. And so the question begs to be answered, do you want to be free of that weight that you're carrying, of the shame that, that, of, that something you've done or something that has been done to you? And we have this miswired programming that we've been living with that's sort of like an invisible saboteur in our life. So listen to these Bible verses. Now that the Lord is spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. John 8, 36. So if the Son sets you free, you're free indeed. Galatians 5, 11. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. And then the last one, Romans 8, 1 and 2. Therefore, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set us free from the law of sin and death. And so do you want to be free? And if so, you need to know what you need to be freed from. Now, if I'm a visitor and I'm a skeptic, which I would have been at this particular age if I didn't become a Christian, I was like, come frickin' on, man, come on. I didn't come. And I'm, I'm telling you that this is the source of your relationship problems. This is the source of your anger. This is the source of your depression. This is the source of your anxiety. This is the sort of the, the source of your addiction. This is the source of everything. All of it emanates from a false understanding of your identity. So I'm going to ask you to give me the benefit of the doubt and go with me through this, okay? We're starting a series today called Not What I Was Made For. And in part, it's a series about woundedness. But at the core of it, it's about living out a new identity in Christ, which is layman's terms for what theologians call sanctification, which is the process of laying aside our old life and assuming this new life in Christ and being changed. And so we're going to go into this series. It's only going to be four weeks long. Um, we're going to be asking people if you're, if you're willing to join a group for four weeks. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the battle for our new identity. And you are very fortunate because today you're going to hear me sing. Okay? There's no applause for that? Come on. Come on. You're going to hear this and you're going to say... What is Sumter afraid of? <laughs> Why are these golden pipes not in the band? And I, they're your words, not mine, okay? So anyway, so because we're not made for the things that we're holding on to, we're starting this series, and today my job is to help you understand one single verse. I want you to know this verse inside out by the end of this series. I want you to memorize this verse, okay? You're very, you think, oh, I don't memorize it. No, I want you to memorize this verse, and it's this, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. 
The old is gone, the new is here. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, let's now read it together. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. I want you to notice those two words, in Christ. In Greek, it is attempting to show that now you are, have a new identity, okay? So in every book in the New Testament, except for the Gospels, you see this phrase coming up over and over again. Let's just take the book of Romans, for instance. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. What? In Christ, right? Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. So in Christ we, though we are many, right? Greet Andronicus and Junius, females, by the way, my fellow Jews who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles. They were in Christ before I was. Greet Urbanus, my co-worker, in Christ. And what he's talking about is that when you make Jesus the leader and forgiver of your life, you're baptized, you come up out of the water and if anyone was in Christ at that moment, you are a new creation. The old you is gone. The new you, which is rooted in Christ and no longer in the world, in, in your mother, in your father, in your culture, in your grandparents, what you learned at school, everything in the world. In Christ, you are a brand new person. Okay? So I want you to get your cameras out. Trust me. No one has cameras. What are we, in the 80s? Pull your phones out. <laughs> Pull your phones out. I'm going to show you a picture that I'm also going to put on social media, but I want you to put it on social media, and gosh, it's hard to read. So it's gonna go on social media. Is it hard to read? But if you can, I want you to snap this picture of it. These are the verses that describe your new identity in Christ. You are saved, accepted, you're chosen, you're forgiven. You're a new person, you're a child of God, you're made in God's image, you belong to Jesus. Jesus offers you a new life. You were a citizen of heaven. You were protected by God. You're a part of something important. God loves you no matter what. God is with you. You are a special creation. You are precious to God. You are rescued. God has a plan for your life. God listens to you. God gives you strength. You're an heir with God. You are part of God's family. The Holy Spirit lives in you. God is taking care of you. Jesus gives you true joy. You're a blessed. Jesus gave himself for you. God understands you. You're treasured. You're complete in Christ. And finally, you are free. This is your new identity. Everything, when you were in the world, they told you things about yourself. You learned things about yourself which are no longer true. Let me give you two examples. I have a friend who was sexually abused from 11 to 14 by her uncle. And the message of woundedness she's been living with is, I have no worth. If I can be treated like this, I have no worth. She became a Christian. She has this new identity. But she's still consumed with this message of woundedness and brokenness that she received in the world. And until this is changed to this new identity, she will never find healing. She will always be living in response to those things that happen. And so what does she need to understand? What needs to be her core message? Exodus 19.5. You are treasured by God. You are immensely, bountifully, wonderfully made. Here's another example. I have a friend that got pregnant, had an abortion in high school. The message of woundedness that she's been living with is, I have this secret that God is punishing me for. I don't deserve happiness. That has shaped everything about her life all the way through up to this point. She became a Christian, received a new identity, but she's still consumed with this old message of woundedness. 
See, what happens, our identity is shaped both by what we're told and what happens to us and the decisions that we make. All of this is combined. And so she's consumed by that. What does she need to understand? There are two verses. Romans 15, 7, you are accepted. And 1 John 1, 9, you are forgiven. I am a new person. I am accepted and forgiven. I deserve Happiness, not because of what I have done, but because of what Christ has done for me. Some of you are stuck in that message. You don't deserve whatever you're experiencing. And so we have that same story. And it's defined our identity for years. But we've been given this promise. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. Right now, the new is here, but I keep living over here. The reason we don't view ourselves through our new identity is this. I want you to remember this. Our souls may have been saved, but our hearts hold on to our core message of woundedness. We believe we're going to heaven, but we don't believe we're going to have heaven come to earth in our lives. That's what this series is about. So I have a problem seeing things and processing things. I'm a visual person. I, I may be the only person here. I have to see it. So I, I took these post-it notes and I texted them to our resident artist, Brett McFarland. And I was like, hey, can you make sense of these? I've got 15 pictures. I want to show, and uh, so he has made them immensely better. Um, he made them, but I want credit for them. Okay, so here we are. All right, here's the first picture. This is where we find ourselves, right? Something is wrong, <laughs> right? We know, right, that there's something wrong about the world and especially about me. There's just something off. I am not who I was made to be, all right? And most of us, at least with any level of self-awareness, we know that. Next, the second picture is most of us realize that something is almost always caused by this thing in the past. Here we are, and at some point, there is this thing that has defined us. There is, there is this person, this event, this choice that has defined who we are today. Next, that wound now becomes the way you view yourself. This wound defines how, what you see in the mirror. It has changed how you view yourself. And so for me, there's something fundamentally wrong with me. And what happens is we're usually not aware of that. And I have gone through my life viewing myself that way, which has caused me to believe certain things about me and certain things about other people. And then when relationships don't work, um, friendships don't work, it's because of that. It's a self-reinforcing thing. I view myself this way, and then when things reinforce it, I go back and say, see, I told you. There's something fundamentally wrong with me. Oh, now... I have a friend that grew up with an alcoholic father. He never knew what was going to happen from one day to the next. And he's grown up with this need and this drive for approval. Let me give you some common things that happen when we're younger that we all go through. One is trauma and abuse. Not everybody, but some have experienced that. You internalize the message of the person that's hurting you. Another one is parental rejection or neglect. Low self-esteem and difficult bonding, attaching. It's a huge word. People have a problem attaching now to a new person and you think it's because you're having difficulty with your spouse when in reality, it's back here, right? High expectations or pressures to succeed, right? You develop a fear or perfectionistic tendencies. Lack of validation or emotional support can lead to, you have difficulty talking about emotional things. You're seeking support, trusting others. Family dysfunction or instability, 
you internalize these feelings of guilt and shame and inadequacy. I used to think that people used to talk about this stuff were like, bro, seriously, shut up. Suck it up. Life's hard. Don't give me this crap, this psychological mumbo jumbo. And then I was like, why do I keep doing the same thing over and over again? And I sit down with someone and they're beating me over the head like Rafiki and the Lion King. What? This, this, this. You are thinking this from here, not from here. Next slide, slide four. Since then, you've shaped your identity around that world. You've embodied that. And so what I want to ask is, what is the core message that your woundedness has given you? If you can go to the next slide here. What is the core? Go to the next one. Here we go. What is your core message of woundedness? What did you receive and what does it tell you about who you are in the world? Think about that just for a second. Can you identify that? When you think about yourself, what not you're thinking, but what you are feeling about yourself, what is that message? What happens next is that message has a collision with the cross. One day, you meet Jesus. This is all of us, right? Like we may look, you may look like you have taken a shower and you just got a haircut, but man, underneath, this is the person you are. All of that messaging, all of your background, the whole sum total of all of your choices and other people's choices, the call, everything that has made you who you are, suddenly you have a collision with Jesus. And then what happens is he gives you, next picture, picture six, a new identity. There is this new identity that you have in Christ. Everything that we just wrote down, everything that we shared, remember that photo we just took? That is all true about you now. This is true about you. If you go to the next picture, the problem is you still operate under this old identity. You still think of yourself the way the old messages taught you the way people taught you, the way the world taught you. If you go to the next photo, because you're operating from that old identity, half of you knows these things about Jesus that he's given you. You believe those to be true, but the other half you just can't seem to get rid of. Why do I do that? Why do I think that? Why, well, I know these things, the Apostle Paul wrote about this in Romans chapter seven. Why do I know the things that I wanna do, but I don't do them? It's because of this split identity that you have. You are living both as a child of God and as a child of all of the crap you experienced in life. This is a recipe for miserableness. Is that a word? Yes. Misery. There we go. That's a better one, right? So the next slide, eight, um, is that you need to understand what happened. You need, to do two, you need to do three things. And the first is this. You need to understand what happened. You have to understand clearly what happened. You might need a counselor to do this. Or, better yet, what you need is good friends. My friend, Dr. Uh, Tom Whiteman says, I would have a lot less business if my clients had better friends. <laughs> where we could just talk about who we are and what we've been through, what's really going on. Picture 10. Second thing we have to do is grieve and forgive, which is a whole lot easier said than done. You're forgiving, you're grieving what could have been. And like, my goodness, all of these years you have been living from this false identity of who you are. And it has caused all of these things in your life and now you're 40 and you're like, I have wasted so much time being that person. And so not only do you have to forgive other people, you have to forgive yourself. And then the third thing that you have to do, if you go to the next picture, 
Actually, uh, I wrote a book about this, um, Getting Rid of the Gorilla. And this was about my struggle to forgive. It was a key part of my identity. If, if one of you is here and in forgiveness, you're stuck at that, just let me know after the service. I'll give you a free copy. Go to the next one. The hardest part is to accept and live out your new identity in Christ, okay? And so the question is, what is your old identity? What is that? The false message that I have received is that I am what? What is that for you? Because the next photo tells you what needs to happen. With that identity, the Bible says this, and that's where you take this photo that I had you take, that I may think this, but the Bible tells me this. And then what happens is the, Holy, the work of the Holy Spirit and the enemy comes in. Some of you don't believe in Satan. And I, I, I get that. Some of you have been married to Satan. You know that, right? Some of you have dated Satan. Some of you have worked for Satan. Some of you have Satan in your family. You get that, right? Um, but Satan, an actual spiritual entity, wants to keep you here. Why? If he could keep you here, he could keep you addicted. The addiction is nothing more than a coping mechanism to deal with the pain of being here. He can keep you in these dysfunctional kind of relationships. He can keep you here without boundaries. He can keep you in your place. He can keep you broken. What does the Bible say in John 10, 10? The enemy has come to seek, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life in life abundantly. And so slide 14 is, as you remind yourself of what God says about you, the pain will slowly subside, which is nothing more than what the Apostle Paul says in Romans 12. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then the last slide is, you will become, go to the next one, you will become the person God made you to be. And this doesn't happen easily. This is a battle. It is a battle for your mind. It is a battle for your soul. It is a battle to wrench you from here to here. You are already here, but you still believe that you are here because everything in your life has been shaped around that message. God now wants you to live here. The freedom and the lightness and the joy and the healing that comes from being over here. Remember our Bible verse? I'm not gonna tell you what it is. Ah, here, I'll stand in front of it. <laughs> Can't see it. Therefore, what? If anyone is in Christ, new creation, I forget it. All right, there we go. <laughs> I didn't even remember it too. The old is gone, the new is here. Okay, we're gonna keep coming back to this over and over again. I'm a new person, I'm a new person. I have a new mind. My past is gone. I have nothing but future ahead of me, right? Now, what movie tells this story? Greatest movie ever made. Give me a drum roll. The Lion King. Do you see The Lion King? Or was this a Gen X thing? I don't know. Remember The Lion King? Remember uh, Simba's Uncle Scar? Go to the next picture. Is holding on to Mufasa, and Simba is watching his father get thrown down, right? And then Scar, go to the next slide, tells Simba it was all his fault. He experiences trauma. And what does Scar do? What does he tell Simba to do? Run, run. And so Simba runs away until he meets two friends. Next, here we go, all right. Who are the two friends? Timon and Pumbaa, right? 
And they're there, and Timon and Pumbaa teach little Simba a song, right? Here it is. We're all going to sing it together, right? Right? Here are the lyrics. Here it is. Hakuna Matata, right? Hakuna Matata. Can you put the lyrics up? You ready? One, two, three. It means no worries for the rest of your days. It's our problem-free philosophy. Hakuna Matata. Oh, we sounded pretty good. Sounded pretty good. Sounded pretty good. Okay. Can you go to that last picture? If you go back and you watch, go to the last picture with Pumbaa and Timon and, no, the next one, before that one, before that one. Here we go. So if you watch the movie, what happens is you watch Simba on this log, they're singing this song, and then what happens? He grows into an adult, right? I experienced this pain, I learned this coping mechanism from the world, and I grow up thinking it's going to go away if I don't think about it. And then Simba, here's some nutty character coming through the forest, then to the savanna, and what is his name? Come on, go to the next one, go to the next one, Rafiki. And what does Rafiki do? He's singing. Those of you who have been to Kenya, you know the language, Asante Sana. What is that? Thank you, or I am, I am well. Asante Santa squash banana, Asante Sana. In other words, Asante Sana, I have found Simba. Thank you, I have found him. And so Simba meets this nutty character, and what does Rafiki do to him? Shabam, right? What was that for? It doesn't matter, it's in the past. Yeah, it still hurts. Oh yes, the past can hurt, but the way I see it, you can either run from it or you can learn from it. And then Rafiki looks at him and he asks the most important question of the movie. The statement. This, you don't even know who you are. You don't even know who you are, do you? And then Rafiki runs off. Simba is grief stricken. And then what happens? Mufasa, the king, shows up. And Simba has an experience. He is made new. And then what does he do? He runs off, he goes back to the kingdom, and he retains his rightful identity. And that's what God wants to do with you. For too long, you have been hurt. For too long, you have been broken. For too long, you have inherited this message from other people that is not correct. Not many people know that when they were watching The Lion King, that they stole a lot of the script from a book by C.S. Lewis called The Chronicles of Narnia. And so the reason this movie was so popular is because the adults who were sitting there with woundedness. They watched someone have an experience with the king. They learned the story that they have learned about themselves as a way of coping. And they realize, bam, this is not who I am. I am this person. And I'm going to begin living in it. And so here's where we're going to be going from here. First, I, I have three big asks. First, I want you to identify your message of woundedness. And probably a lot of you are like, I already know it. I know, I want you to write it down. Second, I want you to identify the verse that counteracts that false identity and tells you your new identity. My core message is there's something fundamentally wrong with me. And so my Bible verse that I am remembering, I'm trying to, I don't know, it's easy for It's easy like in you're in their 30s or 20s. Like, ah, oh, you remember everything, right? Psalm 139, 14. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. I know that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that there's not something wrong with me. I know that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that there's not something wrong with me. I keep wanting to live here and God keeps pulling me over here. You know that, right? You know this. You know this about yourself. 
The enemy says, Brian, there's something fundamentally wrong with you, but God tells, tells me to say, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know them full well. Third, I want you to join a four-week not what I was made for group. If you go to ccvlive.com forward slash groups, let me show you some of the groups that we have coming up. Uh, we have a group with the Capels on Monday night at 6.30. Can you go through this? The Capels, and then uh, Pete is leading one for married men on Friday. And uh, Lisa and I are, for one, with older children, grown children, we're doing one tonight. The Colleen's are doing one in Phoenixville. Um, and then um, uh, Keith Heisel is, go to the next one. Keith Heisel is leading one um, uh, for people via Zoom. And uh, Joe Argento is doing one for men. It's a meetup. And um, the Robin and the Melissa are doing one for moms. That's a meetup here on Sundays at 12:30. And then Eric, our worship pastor, and Robbie, they're going to lead one for people who are more creative and artsy, kind of, kind of that. Uh, you might want to join that. And then we have two other existing groups. Melissa and Dave Luce on Wednesday and Bill and Corrine Cooper on Tuesday night. And then I'm just asking a lot of the other groups, would you please join us for this series? Because I think God's going to do something special as we become the body of Christ for each other. God, thank you so much for what you're going to do for this series. We thank you that you have made us new. You have given us hope. And we can want to live in that because of what you've done on the cross. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Over and over again today, that passage that when we are in Christ, we have become a new creation. The old has gone away and the new has come and so how does that happen and friends it happens through Jesus the sacrifice he made that is what roots us in Christ it enables us to to grow deep roots in our relationship with God because we are no longer just a product of our sin but we are now a new creation. We're going to remember that as we do every single week as we share in communion. So if you are watching from home, go ahead and prepare your communion now. If you're here in the room and you didn't grab it on your way in through the doors, you could also hit that back table in the back of the room. There'll be some communion sitting out there so you can grab that. And then after we sing this song together, we'll eat and drink as one with deep roots in our new creation in Christ together. We'll do that in just a moment. i 
Let's remember together as we share the body of Christ. And the blood of Christ. God, we are so grateful for this way that you serve us as your children to cleanse us from our wrongdoing, to provide forgiveness for the things that we've done, to create a path forward that is free from our past. God, I pray this week through the many discussions that happen throughout groups, through the discussions that happen in people's cars on their way home, to the discussions that happen in the hallways of our churches and our places of work as a result of what we've heard and learned today. God, I pray that you are in them so that we can truly learn our identity that comes through your son. Be with us this week as we pursue that in Jesus' name. Amen. So glad that you were with us this morning. Maybe you need to pray with someone before you head home today. There's our prayer team. We'll meet you in the back of the room. They would love to pray with you before you go. Also, if you're new, don't forget to stop by the info center before you leave. They would love to give you a gift. Also, ladies, if you are a part of Mom Matters, we would love to see you there. This group is a great group for you to connect with other women in our church. I would encourage you to check that out this Tuesday at 7. Don't forget to sign up for a group. We'll see you next Sunday. Have a great week.